And that communication has been lacking. Well, uh, as, as you know, I can give you a very specific example. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. It's Friday night. It is full of fun on Friday. Fantastically fun Friday right here on the Paranormal Portal. And uh, as always, we are absolutely thrilled to be here with you. And thank you for joining us as we dive into two full hours of the, of the, the, the epic experience that is the Paranormal Portal. So welcome to Friday. We're here. You made it. Um, and I'm not here alone. I was just minding my own business when I heard the scratching at the at the at the door. I was like, "What could it be?" Turns out, it was a long beard, Mister Longbeard. Oh, welcome to the show, brother. Oh, hey, hey, are we back? We're back finally. We're back live. I know. Do you Watch. remember how to do this? What? Do what? <laughs> the show. Do you I, remember how to do I the dreaming? show? Am I no, here? it's real. This is real. We uh, are uh, absolutely uh, live, ladies uh, and wow. gentlemen. Cool. Thank Hi. <laughs> how you doing everything good yeah all's good all is good all is good well all is good for me too ladies and gentlemen and and uh we have a lot to go through tonight but before we go any further i just want to thank the sponsor of the paranormal portal which is cryptid coin and ladies and gentlemen if you're not familiar with cryptid coin it's a new cryptocurrency um and, and the vision of this is so perfect and beautiful and it and it really hits close to home for me because being an enthusiast of the paranormal and cryptozoology, this is a, a part of the mission at the heart of cryptid coin is to use a, a, a portion of the proceeds of the coin in order to fund cryptid research in the form of grants uh, for uh, teams around the world. And so whether you're into Bigfoot, uh, Sasquatch, it's kind of the same thing. But <laughs> Loch Ness Monster, if you're into the Mothman, if you're into the Rake, if you're into, uh, maybe, I don't know if Skinwalkers. Black-eyed kids. Black-eyed kids. Ugh, nobody wants to find those. Done. <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to find those. They just show up and knock. And, um, but all of those research efforts are currently being conducted by people from their own passion, their own blood, sweat, and tears. And uh, it's oftentimes encumbered by a person's ability to self-finance. So this is a really exciting development in that the, some of the proceeds are going to be used to fund research. And so I think this is a really, uh, really cool because it's going to push the needle way ahead on cryptid research. And uh, these efforts are going to really magnify the efforts of the teams that are doing it. So if you want to learn more, go to cryptidcoin.io and uh, you can learn more information about the cryptocurrency itself. And this isn't a, this isn't an attempt to uh, tell you how to, how to spend your money or what to do, but it's just an attempt to, to show you that. Buy Cryptidcoin. <laughs> if you so choose, um, you know, as with any investment, there are risks and, and I can't pretend that that's not the case in this case as well, but 
it's good to know that what you're investing in is also the passion of so many of us who are into the into the cryptozoology and and uh, all these strange creatures out there that are, people are looking for. So, <laughs> but anyway, um, thank you. A special thank you to CryptidCoin for sponsoring the show, and uh, we hope you guys will check it out again. CryptidCoin.io is where you'll find out more information. So, let's get on to the show. All right, Don. You know where we need to start. Um, I um, do, uh, we start the show with a bunch of BS, and then we go news. We go to news. The news, ladies and gentlemen. Let's wow. get to the news and see what's going on here. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Paranormal Portal News Desk, and uh, we have bunch of news lined up here just perusing it earlier today going mm, i gotta talk about this that i gotta talk about this yummy. so i pulled up a bunch of them don and and hopefully uh you all agree that these are finely curated curated articles of uh anything you find is finely curated <laughs> you haven't seen the back of my fridge <laughs> I don't know if I want to. No, probably not. <laughs> All right. Like so, a secret room back there? <laughs> no, no it's just, there's, there's <laughs> probably things back there that shouldn't be. Um, choo-choo-choo-chatabelle. All right. Uh, the, this is coming. Our news comes from <laughs> unexplained-mysteries.com. And a special uh, promotion to them as well. They do a great job. And, and any of the sites that we utilize on the show, we hope you guys will go out and check them out because they are obviously working hard to put this stuff out, and, and they do an amazing job. So this is unexplained-mysteries.com, and they are bringing us an article. It says, Mystery Surrounds Case of a Man Who Was Hit by Ghost Gunshot. A ghost Gunshot? You ever heard of a Ghost Gunshot, Don? Uh, no. Me either, but as of February 18th, uh, 2022, apparently there was. Let's find out what is going on here. It says the man had been walking outside when he was hit by a bullet that seemed to come out of nowhere. The peculiar incident, which happened last Thursday in the town of Fra Frauenfeld, is that right? Frauenfeld, yeah. Sounds good. In Switzerland, involved a 38-year-old man who had been outside with his two children and another adult when he suddenly felt an intense, sharp pain in his lower body. When he went to the emergency room at the local hospital, he was told by doctors that he had, in fact, been shot and that the bullet was still lodged inside of him. Jeez. Oh. Fortunately, his injuries were not severe and doctors were able to remove the bullet and treat the wound. However, nobody could explain exactly where the bullet had come from. At the time of the shooting, neither he, he nor anyone he was with had heard any sort of gunshot and had, there had been no sign of anyone with a gun in the vicinity. The bullet itself hasn't revealed much in the way of clues either, other than the fact that the gun was likely a very low caliber weapon. Otherwise, it would have done much more damage. A police investigation has since been launched in an attempt to get to the bottom of the mystery. Maybe a kid was playing with an air gun, he uh, said weapons expert Martin Erard. If a small caliber weapon was actually involved, someone must have handled the firearm with gross negligence. <laughs> yeah, it's like, wow. Oh, really? But they didn't hear uh, the report, a gunshot? No, they nothing. And uh, just... Just she boom. Got him in the leg, huh? I, I don't it, I, it just says lower body. Lower I don't, body, yeah, that's true. That's all it says. So I don't know exactly where wow. he was shot, but well, I, I wonder, I wouldn't you think you would know like a, maybe a the fold in the veil. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Maybe maybe it was a maybe it was a portal slip or something. Yeah, and, yeah but, that's a hell of a slip. Well, <laughs> that's not a good slip. Oops, sorry, fellas. <laughs> Heads. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Whatever the case is, that's pretty creepy. I don't know. You, you definitely, you know, I will tell you, though, that one time I was, I was walking in my driveway back in Minnesota, and I heard something go like that. Hmm. And I looked down, and there in, in this little mud puddle was a 9 millimeter round. Really? Yeah, like it hit the ground. It came, I don't know where it came from, but I, I assume somebody just shot a, shot a round up into the sky. Right. And, and as I was walking down the, the driveway, I was like... And I looked down, and there, there it was. I still got that round somewhere. I was really? like, ooh, that's pretty creepy. Yeah, no doubt. So kind of a ghost gunshot, too, I guess. Yep. But weird things. I, I know that if you know people negligently fire a weapon in the air, it's got to come gotta down. It's got to come down. Yeah, yeah, that's just how it works. Mm -hmm. So I, I assume somebody had done that somewhere where it was too far away to hear the report. But 
But uh, you know, it always made me wonder. You know, in the westerns, you know, they see this pew 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 pew. Yeah. You know, pew 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 pew. Yeah. How did nobody ever get shot? I don't know. How did how did no they didn't fall out of the and nobody caught a stray bullet in the head? Right. I yeah, don't know. I've either. always wondered about that. That is some strangeness, isn't it? Well, whatever the case, uh, obviously, obviously this person was okay. So good for okay, them. We're yeah. glad to hear that, of course. Yeah, but how do you build that one out? Um, <laughs> send that to the ghost, would you? That goes under act of God. Act of God. God does not love me. <laughs> for some reason, he's just kind of mad. <laughs> I guess so. But we got some more news for you, uh, just in case that wasn't enough. And, Don, if you had a, a, a bear that was getting into picnic baskets, what would you name it? <laughs> <laughs> Lunch. Lunch. No. Yeah. Well, yeah, you might actually, huh? <laughs> <laughs> He'll end up in the picnic I basket. I call it meat. Meat. Um, there is another article here. Giant bear named Yogi wreaks Let's havoc figure. in Lake Tahoe. Lake Tahoe, even. Look like at that chonker, too. He's wow. a big black bear. Wow. Yep. Uh, it says there's a 500 pound bear on the loose in California and it's doing more than just stealing picking it baskets. Oh, yeah, boo boo. Yeah. Named after the popular Hanna-Barbera cartoon character, the enormous black bear, which has been spotted across the region has been responsible for more than 150 calls to law enforcement and wildlife authorities due to its penchant for damaging just about everything it comes into contact with. <laughs> That's a freaking bear. <laughs> Sounds like some relatives they got. No doubt. According to wildlife officials, the mischievous, mischievous bear has caused extensive property damage and forcefully entered several homes. <laughs> what, ha what would you do if we broke into your home? <laughs> <laughs> Including occupied homes. Wow. Oof. This one individual bear has been linked to property damage at least 38 properties at least, said Peter Tira of the California Department of Fish and Wildlife. Wow. Unfortunately, efforts to trap the bear have come up to empty, <laughs> with Yogi seemingly just as adept as his cartoon <laughs> counterpart at avoiding capture. <laughs> An attempt to scare him away from the area with loud music also failed to achieve anything. The pro bear activist group known as the uh, known as the Bear League has since been That's trying to show. appeal to wildlife officials to move Yogi to a new home rather than to put him down. Yeah. Well, it said they were trying to trap him, so that hasn't been working. Uh, the Bear League reached out to the director of an excellent out-of-state wildlife sanctuary who agreed he has room and would be very willing to give this bear a permanent home, wow. said the group's executive director, Ann Bryant. As things stand, however, <laughs> Yogi <laughs> remains at large. <laughs> 500 pounds. He's plenty at large. <laughs> yeah, <without it. laughs> Well, there you have it. Well, they called him Yogi, and then they, they wonder why he's going into picking Nick no baskets. Come on. Yeah. He's got quite a namesake to live up to, Don. That's true. That's true. <laughs> Waiting for his hang glider 3000, you know? Yeah. Well, that's Wiley e. Coyote, isn't it? No. Well, you, oh, you haven't seen the live action movie then? No, no. I, oh, I, I, gotcha. I guess I missed that. Yeah. The picnic, picnic record <clears throat> something, something. Oh. <laughs> it was quite the record. Oh. Well, speaking of weird stuff. What? Since, oh, I, I heard something about this something. Is, this is uh, from unexplained-mysteries.com, and it says, scientists create artificial fish... That can swim using a human heart cells. <laughs> oh, where'd no, they get is, those? <laughs> this is different, yeah. Where'd they get human heart cells? I wonder. Oh yeah, from somebody's heart. Uh, the synthetic fish were able to swim around autonomously using the con contractions of the muscle tissue. The remarkable Frankenstein-esque fish was built by a team of scientists from Harvard University using. Paper, gelatin, and two layers of human cardiac muscle tissue, wow. one on each side. <coughs> Go figure. <laughs> I guess. Uh, we put them both on the same side. All he does is go in a circle. <laughs> <laughs> the fish were able to glide through the water on their own without any additional source of external propulsion, thanks to the stretching and contraction of the heart tissue. A special node was added to act like a pacemaker <laughs> and control the rhythm and frequency. Incredibly, the fish continued to swim for 108 days. The equivalent of 308 million beats. It's a training exercise, said senior author Definitely and Harvard bi bioengineer Kit Parker. Ultimately, I wanted to build a heart for a sick kid. The real interesting, the the really inter interesting thing about these fish, which we weren't expecting, is how long they would swim and how fast they would swim in the dish. The experiment uh, represents a significant step forward in the development of artificial hearts for transplant patients and could one day go on to help save countless lives. 
According to Parker, the idea came to him when he spotted a jellyfish during a visit to an aquarium. I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, it pumps. Looks like a heart pump, he said. I'm thinking if I could, I wonder if I could build the damn thing, he says. <laughs> well, he made a little fish. They even got a fish hook in oh, it geez. on the picture. <laughs> I got one. So I did, I have, I have been reading recently about basically nanobots that they have designed that they can actually program to deliver like medicines to specific parts of the body oh, and really? they're actually they're actually um um externally um guided oh, wow. so they can literally tell it where to go oh in, in your body and wow. that's kind of scary actually if you think about it yeah it is because I guess so. yeah you know i mean they can just sit out in their car with a remote control and yeah, all sudden it. you're stroking out yeah exactly yeah I don't know. Um, That's cause I, a ca clot in the brain. They just all go <laughs> right to that one spot. They just make a stroke out. group hug. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I don't that's know. Sc kind of scary. Technology is kind of scary in some ways, but I think it's also kind of exciting. Like you know, yeah, as long as it's being used for the betterment of things, I think it's wonderful yeah, when it's used things to things like that can go. go yeah, I know. Well, time. for every good application, there's about five bad ones yeah. that people would think of. So that's the scary part for sure. But you know, I guess you know, such is the case of progress. Um, let's go to the next one, and this one is uh, kind of close to our heart wow. here. Has to do with Mr. Travis Walton. Travis Walton. Yep, of Stop course. Been able to get a hold of him. Yeah, he's he's not easy to track down. Um, this is from unexplained-mysteries.com. Travis Walton opens up about alien abduction in new documentary. Walton disappeared from remote forest trail after he and his workmates encountered a UFO. In November 5th, 1975, Travis Walton and six of his co-workers had been driving on a remote dirt road in the Apache uh, Sitgreaves National Forest in northeastern Arizona when they came across a strange luminous disc-shaped object hovering nearby. Walton had got out of the truck to approach the craft and he was hit by a bluish light which threw him to the ground. His co-workers fled the scene in a panic, but when they returned a short time later, both he and the mysterious object had disappeared. The Walton was eventually turned up five days later, scared, confused, and in fleeting memories of having encountered strange extraterrestrial entities during the time he was missing. His story would go on to become one of the best-known UFO abduction cases ever recorded. Now a new Discovery Plus documentary, Shock Docs, Alien Abduction Travis Walton, is set to lift the lid on his chilling experience in more detail than ever before. Mm. A trailer for the documentary, which will premiere on February 18th, can be viewed below. That's tonight. Yeah, is it the 18th tonight? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I guess it's it's uh, starting tonight. Um, there is, uh, for those of you that are interesting, there's plenty of uh, YouTube videos where Travis has spoken at conferences and stuff, and, and he goes into discussing what actually happened versus what was pre pre uh, portrayed within that movie. The What is it? The... Fire what in the sky. Fire in the sky. Thank yeah. you. I knew it was like fire what? Yeah. Fire in the sky. So um, I, I have heard his detailed explanation of those things in those talks, but it would be neat to see this. So if you've got uh, Discovery Plus, you might want to check it out. Check and if you do, let us know. I want to know what, you know if it's worth looking into myself. Right. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, his story is absolutely fascinating and, and kind of terrifying, <laughs> yep. you know. But anyway... That's what's going on. He's still uh, talking about it. We got to get him on the show to talk on the show. Yeah, that'd be great. Maybe our we friend Wes could do something to help us out with that. <laughs> yeah, is, is Wes in here? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. All right. But if he listens later. <laughs> All right, let's go to the next article. What time do we have? I got to watch the time here a little bit. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're doing okay. Yeah, so We've got time, folks. It's a network night. It's a network night. Yeah, we got breaks, so. Just going to tap the brakes here a little bit and get to the next one. And this one is Board Guard Draws eye Eyes on a Million Dollar Painting. <gasps> oh, my gosh, no. <laughs> yeah. No. Absolutely. It comes from the Bizarre Files, February 11th, 2022, ladies and gentlemen. Board Guard. A board Guard. A new job. <laughs> decided, he decided to pencil in some eyeballs on a million dollar painting. <laughs> oh, because the painting, for those of you who are listening, not seeing, the painting is uh, these they figures like that are just real blank face. There's no mouth, no eyes, no nose. 
And uh, <laughs> this guy, he drew, he drew circles on it. Oh, my God. How much do you got to hate your job <laughs> that that gets to be a good idea? <laughs> <laughs> a security guard in an art gallery in Russia was found to have drawn eyes on a highly valuable painting. Oh. The bizarre incident was first brought to light back in December when two visitors to the Boris Yeltsin Presidential Center in Ekaterinburg noticed that one of the paintings, Anna Leproskaya's three figures, appeared to have been vandalized. The culprit had drawn sets of eyes on the faceless figures in the painting, which dates back to the oh, 1930s and is understood to be uh, insured for around a million dollars. Yeah. <laughs> Initially, a Kattenberg's ministry of internal affairs had deemed the issue too trivial to investigate. However, the intervention of the ministry of culture quickly changed that <laughs> and a police investigation was launched. It turned out that one of the gallery's own security guards had drawn eyes on, on using a ballpoint oh pen. Oh, my goodness. The guard, who has not been named, had <laughs> apparently... <he's> dead. <laughs> <laughs> had apparently been bored during his first day on the job. His last day on the job. <laughs> what, did, uh, they, did they train this guy? Well, and how long was he on the job after he drew <laughs> it? How long? They'll never notice. <laughs> Is he what is he? Yeah, what did he think? Know. He was, he was, uh, he was, uh, uh, what's the Van Gogh? Yeah, did he think he was just gonna moonlight as an artist? <laughs> no doubt. His motives are still unknown, but the administration believes it was some kind of lapse in sanity. Lapse in you sanity, think? yeah, said exhibition curator Anna Resh Reshitkina. Fortunately, though, it does not look as though the damage is too severe. <laughs> Oh my uh, God! Does he think he's Matt Damon solving math problems there, or uh, what? You know, Goodwill so, Hunting. Settle down there, Will. <laughs> oh no! That is just tragic. I don't know how you get that stupid. On his first day. His first day, he was so bored, he just decided to start drawing eyes on on priceless well, artwork. You know, why not? You know, I mean, people go to people go to like yard sales and stuff and buy old like paintings. Yeah. And then they add stuff in and. You know, oh yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Know? Why not? You know, I mean. You know, well, because the, the, obviously this was only, very valuable. It's only, it's only, it's only insured for a million dollars, right? And it's, it's at the board ass Yelts and Presidential <laughs> Gallery. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Pretty crazy. <laughs> wow. You don't hear them that often. That's, Those kind of stories are very rare. But man, that's because they're not. They don't live long enough to know. <laughs> I know. It's, this person got disappeared. Did He's not been you? able to be reached for comment. Yeah. <laughs> nope I, su I suppose not <laughs> all right so the next article we're going to get into ladies and gentlemen is coming from unexplained-mysteries.com and this is ghoulish woman in white allegedly shouts and swears at tourists <laughs> i thought that was my job <laughs> yeah exactly go back home you know, <clears throat> Tony and in an update this turns out this was a drunken retired woman who tired of people on her lawn <laughs> exactly get, get off, off my lawn get off my lawn <laughs> A, a beauty spot in Somerset, England, is believed to be home to a rather foul-mouthed spook. <laughs> Known for their natural splendor and historic landscape, the, the Quantock Hills have long been a popular destination for hikers. Yet hidden away in one of the unassuming corner of this expansive region lies one site in particular that is less than idyllic. Known as Dead Woman's Ditch... <laughs> Maybe she doesn't like the name. Yeah, maybe, man. maybe she, that wasn't. My name's Karen. <laughs> <clears throat> Could have been Karen's Playhouse, but no, it's Dead Woman's Ditch. This un this unnerving site has become synonymous with reports of a ghostly presence that has been said to swear relentlessly at anyone foolhardy enough to venture near it. Relentlessly. I know. <laughs> what are you doing, you wanker? I wonder if we can get an interview with her. <laughs> The site itself has been named after Jane Waldorf, a woman who was murdered by her husband, and some believe that it is her spirit who now haunts the area. That there remains sense. there remains some disagreement over whether or not the site really is named after her, as the original is thought to appear on maps which predate the murder. Oh. Ghost hunting couple Chris and Christine and Dave Thomas, who have been investigating the site, claim that they have personally heard a disembodied voice telling them to leave. <laughs> There's definitely something there, said Dave. My wife has experienced it for a long time. <laughs> Some of the locals have also had their own paranormal experiences. When I was about 17, on my way home from work, 
driving along a cold road, I saw a bright white figure on the side of the road, so I slowed down, said one resident. It appeared to be a woman completely dressed in white, old-fashioned clothing. I couldn't take my eyes off as I drove past, and I couldn't bring myself to turn around to have another look. I just drove home in complete shock. To date, no definitive explanation for the phenomena at Dead Woman's Ditch has ever been found. I'm just, you know, maybe rename it to, to Sleepy Hollow or Quiet Corner or something. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Snitches get stitches yeah. and thrown in ditches. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, I guess if you name it Dead Woman's Ditch, it's probably going to piss off all the local spirits. Yeah, no doubt. All right, so um, let's see what we're doing for time here. Oh, As we march towards the break, which is literally a minute away. Wow. I think that's where we're going to leave the news, and I'll just hit the next one tomorrow night. There's only one left anyway, so we did good. I got through more than I thought I would. Huh. But, yeah, folks, you just, you know, I think that's something, there's something in a name. So name your places happy things. <laughs> That's going to wrap it up for the news. So let's get back to the show. The news. All right. So we got through the news, Don. Sweet. Do you feel more informed now? I, I feel very <laughs> reformed. Reformed? Oh, oh my informed, God. Informed. Informed. Oh, okay. I was, I was deformed. Like, wow. deformed. Deformed. Yeah. yeah. Malformed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> me too i feel informed and and uh i always like doing the news those are fun for me they're fun aren't they done well what are you gonna do you name a bear yogi what do you expect him to do <laughs> i yeah. don't know boo boo gosh i don't know <laughs> hey, hey boo boo well time wow. to get a picnic basket yep but we're gonna go to break here ladies oh, and gentlemen no. the first break of the night Wonder and uh woman. she it, says it's like ding dong ditch <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, except it's a cussing ghost. <laughs> <laughs> it's more like it's ding dong. <laughs> All right, folks, we're going to go to our first break. Oh, and uh, we'll be right back after these messages. Don't go away.
ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second half hour of tonight's show. It's burning by. It's burning by. Right, Don? It is, you know, and, and just wanted to mention how much we missed you. We, yeah, absolutely. You know, and, and again, I said it last show, but thank you all for you guys' patience. I, I was really sick for yeah, a, a week, and, and it was it was nasty. It wasn't the COVID, though. It wasn't that at all. I, I tested for that, and it was just some kind of pneumonia thing, but it was a bear. But thank you all for the patience. What was it named Yogi? <laughs> I see what you did there. No, it was not. Um, <laughs> but... Yeah, I made it, but I thank you guys for that because it was really cool. All of the wonderful messages of support and like, hey, take your time. Hope you're feeling better. That really makes makes you feel good, even if you're feeling like garbage. So thank you guys for that love and support, and it, it really did. We, you know, I know I really miss doing the show, so it's great to be back in. Oh, that's cool. I could, so who's that said? Energetic team. I could listen to you narrate stories all day and night. Well, then wow. in that case, if they want to hear your narration, what should they do? They should go watch Walking with the Woodwows. Oh yeah, with the Woodwows, the Woodwows Walking with the Wild Man Part Two is a is I did the I did the narration for the documentary, and it's yep. a, a our good buddies out of uh, Ireland, yep. the Irish Bigfoot Research Organization, did a, a couple videos and uh, for their trailer, uh, the first video I did their their trailer voiceover for the American release on Amazon Prime, mm -hmm. and then I ended up narrating the whole second one. So if you want to hear my voice. That'd be great, and it would also help support them. So it's it's called right. uh, it's called Woodwose Walking with the Wild Man Two, and there's a part three in the works that uh, we'll be doing as and well. That's, that's on Prime, right? Yeah, yep, yep. You can find those on Prime. So they are there. Um, let's see, we got a show to do here, huh? Yep. Imagine taking your next trip listening to the Paranormal and Portal you, Music. And where can you Aww. get the Paranormal Portal Music, Brent? Oh, wow. This is like self-promotion night. Well, let me tell you, there are, there are a few of the songs, uh, most of the songs are uh, that I've written. If you're listening to the show, you're hearing my songs. And and I apologize if you don't like them, but uh, I, thank Tough you. Tough luck. Thanks to those of you that do, but if you want to download a copy of your own, you can do so at uh, ba uh, Brent Thomas dot bandcamp.com there you go Br yeah brent and it, the link is in the description uh if in the youtube if you want it if you want it that'd be that's really cool i mean i i, I obviously uh i love writing music i don't do it nearly enough but uh it's it's really cool so we're gonna get into more uh thanks seven pearls Thank you a lot. Um, we're going to get into more of the paranormal that you've come to love right here on the show. We're going to start out with uh, a few um, claims of experiences from the Sasquatch Chronicles blog. And a special thanks to our good friend, Mr. Wes Germer, for making that available to us. Um, these, are, these are really cool. Now, I, I will tell you that Sasquatch Chronicles was really a big part of forming my vision for what would become the paranormal portal. Yeah, they're okay. Yeah, you know, we, we <laughs> like them pretty good. And uh, Wes has been a good friend and a, and a mentor in a lot of ways to me and to the show. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so it's really cool that he lets us do this. But uh, there's a few uh, few few uh, stories on his blog that I wanted to get into. And let's get into the first one. And this is, uh, again, SasquatchChronicles.com, the blog. And there's the nice, nice uh, website. Oh, uh, isn't that cute? It is. It's yeah. beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Sasquatch Chronicles blog from January 31st. And somebody's writing, I wanted to share an experience. A listener writes, I wanted to share an experience I had 12 years ago that I think might have been a Bigfoot. I still can't wrap my head around what happened that night. And lately, it's been the only thing I've been able to think about. I started researching what it could have been about three weeks ago and didn't find that much that I would consider proof of Bigfoot. Then I ran across Wes's Facebook and YouTube channels. As I started listening to all the stories, my experience started to unfold. Mm. It wasn't until someone from one of the episodes started explaining a fast-moving black, darker-than-the-night shadow on all fours running so fast it was unexplainable. At that moment, a chill ran down my back and things got really emotional. I felt sick, like I'd just run into a rotten corpse. <laughs> the memories of that night are replayed over and over in seconds. I need to back up a little bit here before I go too far ahead of myself. I, I never really believed in Bigfoot. I was a ghost hunter that had a team starting back in 2004. The name of the team was NWPIA, Northwest Paranormal Investigation Agency. 
My first encounter with the paranormal was in the late summer of 2004 at Wellington, and I haven't stopped investigating the area since then. I have to set up the story so it all ties into that night 12 years ago, so bear with me. The area of Wellington has a huge history, 96 deaths in 1910, and the worst train accident in history. As luck would have it, I live 30 minutes away from that spot, so going there at any time of the year wasn't that hard to do. That particular night in 2004, the co-founder and I were standing on a parking lot about 12 to 1 a.m. in the morning when we heard a woman start humming. Keep in mind, we were deep in the forest with nothing or anyone around us for miles. After the woman started humming, she started to sing. I couldn't hear the words or understand them, but we both heard her sing. I couldn't explain it. In 2008, we heard what sounded like a group of people talk as they were walking the trail, but then when we looked, there was no one there. I can't remember the year, maybe 2008, that that a Seattle radio station, The Wolf, asked us to take some listeners on a paranormal investigation in October. We took them to Wellington. It was around 1.30 a.m. when we all heard and recorded a six-year-old child yell out, Mama! And there were, there were so many more accounts of strange things that happened there that I just can't explain it. No children died in the snowslide slash train accident in 1910. Okay, now fast forward to the late summer of 2009. The group was hanging out in a wooden overlook just outside of the snowshed overlooking a, a ravine with a forest of trees. Looking behind you 50 feet away was a snowshed. The top of the snowshed from the ground is about 20 or 30 feet tall, and it's about the same width. The top is solid concrete and very thick. Behind the top is a very dense forest. You just have to Google, Google map it. And that night, we brought a huge spotlight with us, the kind that has a small motorcycle battery for a power source. It was dark, and someone turned it on, shining it into the trees facing away from the snowshed. They started making huge shadow puppets, figures in the spotlight. And soon after, we heard the loudest, creepiest scream I've ever heard come out of any animal. Shortly after that, we heard what sounded like a tree being thrown off the top of the snowshed, making a huge thud as it hit the ground. All of this was recorded on a fancy recorder. The place went silent. I mean, totally silent. I grabbed one of the guys and headed into a snowshed to see what hit the ground. As we got to the end of the wooded walkway entering the snowshed, I looked to the right. Uh, I, I, uh, see, I see down the pathway, or I see, okay, just a mistype. I see down the pathway what I can only explain as a huge, blacker-than-black, oblong figure without a visible head and the strangest moving four legs I've ever seen running so fast at me, I couldn't move. I mean, it was moving so fast, I can't even explain it. But it was like popping in and out of time, like in a different dimension and then back in our time and space. And this is where I get confused about what it was. Mm. I wasn't scared or, or wanted to draw my forty-five and shoot it. I just wanted to watch it. I was fixated on the leg movement and how unnatural it moved as it passed by both of us. We didn't hear it. Both of us tracked it with our heads moving in the same direction, and both of us saw the same thing. I don't think much was said about it after we saw it. I still can wrap my little squirrel brain around what it was. Shortly after that, I gathered the group and headed out for the snowshed, or out of the snowshed. One of the investigators set up a digital camera outside in the snowshed before heading out. And as they reviewed the footage shortly after setting up the cam, you can clearly hear grunting noises echo through the snowshed. Mm. I'm starting to think that the child's voice, the talking on the trail, and the woman singing weren't paranormal after hearing the Bigfoot mumbling sounds recorded from others. To think I'd go there and still do, and either investigate at night or, or night hike in that area. After researching, I found out that that area is a migration path for Bigfoot. Whoops. 
<laughs> Oops. There are so many things that have happened up over there in the last 17 years of investigating the area. We could spend hours talking about it. You can YouTube my name and see the, some of the videos we recorded are up there. I'll also tag the, other, uh, the persons that could better explain that night or fill in any of the gaps. I think they have the video and recordings from that night. Mm. You know, that's one thing, Don, that, that we hear often from witnesses of, of Bigfoot or, or whatever it is they're seeing is the unnatural speed. Right. People talk about it moved so fast. Yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't comprehend what I was seeing. Because I think, you know, we have, we have a barometer for, for movement when we see things move. It's right. like that, that's how fast a dog runs. That's how fast a deer runs, you know. And, and then to see something that, well, first of all, it also moves unnaturally, almost right. in spurts, which is, it does sound more spiritual in the way that they're describing it, that it was kind of like in and out of time, just like right. shifting forward. Isn't that what it sounded like? That's, yeah, that's what it sounded like. You know, and, and people in the chat are talking about Wendigo, but I'm thinking more rake because mm. I'm thinking more rake, honestly. Um, now, as for the vocalizations, do rakes have the ability to mimic voices and speech? I don't know. Don't know. Yeah. I don't know anybody who's been close enough to one, you know, to to hear something like that. But right. you know, that's what I imagine a rake, how a rake would move on all fours very quickly, you know, maybe um with very quick start and stops mm -hmm. that makes it look like a stop action, oh. you know, or it's like, you know, uh, folding small areas of space, sure. you know. Yeah. Um so that sounds to me like more like a rake than well and somebody else said skinwalker too yeah that sure i don't know that's pretty I think interesting it, i think i think rake though it says <clears throat> it screams rake to me except for the mumbling and yeah. the talking and know? the singing now the only other time mm -hmm. that i've heard a, a claim of singing was was from uh todd todd niece yeah he was talking about hearing that when yep. he was investigating and it was very melodic yeah and he knew it wasn't a person but and then he saw the red eyes as well so right. i mean the, that's just really incredible because the thing that those those the, you know the fact that they hear mumbling and stuff and and the singing is is it it shows an intelligence yes a culture a culture yes, yeah definitely and i think that that's fascinating yep. Yep. i love the idea that that's the case i you know i i've never experienced that obviously myself but right. Right. i i i guess you know they may very well be in our range or perhaps more intelligent than us i don't know maybe it is smarter not to live in <laughs> cities and <laughs> to dig up and grind up the earth around you but uh you know i think it's it's fascinating that they they could have this kind of intelligence right, right. Yeah. and culture and you know i mean and then you got to think so is do they have songs you know like do they have songs right like lullabies <clears throat> and, you right know. yeah, yeah. Things that may be a tribal or, or something to that nature. Yeah, you might, I mean, even, you know, if you, even if you go to, you know, Deepest Darkest Africa, you know, they have, you know, songs and dance and the the indigenous peoples there. And, and even here, you know, they, sure. you know there's, there, there's, music is everywhere. Music is universal. Mm -hmm. Music is, you know, so yeah, it doesn't surprise me at all. You know, um, yeah, not at all. I mean, even, even, you know, the birds and, and animals, you know, they all chitter and they all have their sure. vocalizations within their family groups and things like this, you know. So, um, yeah, um, I wanted to address this real quick. Energetic team says, you know, um, agreed with rake and said ghoul as well. Now, mm. I personally think ghouls and rakes, rakes are just na new names for ghouls myself. Um, I believe they're pretty much one and the same. Um, so yeah, I would, I would say ghoul as well. Uh, the, he also said basically undead demons. Well, you know, I yeah, it's, know it's, that, it's but, hard you know. to say whether they're, you know, right. When you think of demons, when I hear the word demons, I'm thinking of, of, you know, spiritual beings, very spiritual yeah. fallen angels kind of thing. You know, I mean, these real principalities, these, you know, very potent, strong creatures. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know. Not to, not to not to imply that you have to have some religious outlook for it, but uh, I think that the fact that there are demons in in almost every culture around the world, as there are angels in right. almost every culture around the world, um, it seems to imply that there's you know a hierarchy of 
spiritual powers. Right. And, and when I hear demon, I think, well, maybe, you know, maybe there is the fallen angels that created the demons if you're, you know, if you have a, a Christian type of outlook, or, but maybe it's just something else. Right. Just yeah. another type, like the jinn were not, were not necessarily demonic, right. but they were apparently a created being a rogue so, being yeah, yeah from the blue flame yeah. so um whatever you whatever you believe i mean it could be any and, and 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 all of the above because ultimately nobody knows right we're, it's all semantics really right. because we're dealing with unknowns and we're trying to attribute you know a label to fit them and and i don't necessarily think any of us is qualified but we're certainly all entitled to our beliefs and ideas right yeah Absolutely, yeah. And that's what I love about the show is the discussions, to having the discussions about the ideas. That, to me, is very powerful. So that was the first one, and we've got more. But wait, there's more. But wait. And in the second hour, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to get into some stories from truckers. And uh, these are pretty cool. I love, I love stories from truckers because these guys... <laughs> see so much of the world and and, and odd hours of the day and <clears throat> right night and yeah. just these back roads right and, the barren you know. empty road when it's just them and a lot of highway and some of the stuff they see it's amazing and our good friend uh, mcat who is a mm -hmm. over the road yeah. trucker he's yeah. called in and shared several yeah. of his experiences and they're really incredible experiences so um we're gonna get into some of those you're gonna get into some of those so Let's uh, let's go into the next one uh, from Sasquatch Chronicles. I think I jumped way ahead on that one, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I'm kind of going in reverse to my tabs, but this is the next one. Well, how can you tell? <clears throat> <laughs> well, I by the direction I'm traveling with oh, my clicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if I'm going left to right, I'm going the right way, and uh, if I go right to left, You're I'm going, going the backwards. Wrong way. Well, backwards. <laughs> left to right is right. <laughs> All right, well, I set them up to go left to right, but I don't always end up doing it. Anyway, the next one is from January 31st from Sasquatch Chronicles blog, and this is my experience from Manitoba. A listener writes, well, here goes. This is my experience with two animals uh, that more than 20 years later, I still cannot rationalize it in my mind. I've kept it to myself all of these years. This would have been January, February 1995 or 96 up in northern Manitoba near the town of Flin Flon. That's the name of a town. That sounded Flin Flon to me. <laughs> Flin Flon. It's like, <laughs> it's a sound somebody makes falling down the <laughs> stairs. <laughs> Flin Flon. <clears throat> I don't know. It was, it was a blistering cold winter that year. Blistering like, cold. Yeah. All e right. Even for Manitoba. <laughs> I remember looking through the kitchen window where I was staying and the wall thermometer outside was around negative 40 plus wind chill. Oof, that's brutal. Mm. I don't hurt, I don't hunt rather. <laughs> I don't hunt anymore. But back in those days, I was big into fishing and hunting and traveled to many remote northern locations in Manitoba. I used to always say it was uh, the experience of being in and around these untouched, uninhabited lakes and forests that was the draw for me. I never cared whether or not I came back with any game or fish, but always came back home smiling from the adventure. As you can imagine, I'd run into my fair share of the usual suspects in my travels, black bear, moose, wolves, coyotes, etc. Also a cougar once near Lynn Lake, uh -huh. and even a group of swift foxes on a couple of occasions that were thought to be wiped out what of you that call area. A cougar, I call it peer. <laughs> <clears throat> What you call a cougar, I call a date. A date. <laughs> Thank you. Um, just kidding. So it's fair to say I know the forest fairly well, and I know the animals, in, uh, or at least I thought I did. On this occasion, I was spending several days up in Flin Flon. <laughs> it, does, Flin Flon. it doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any better, no. even the more I use it. No, nope. We love you Canadians, absolutely. We do, but absolutely. There's just something about you. <laughs> Flynn flown with my girlfriend at her relative's place. Her <laughs> uncle took us out fishing, ice fishing, for lake trout uh, on a nearby lake a few kilometers from town. There were two groups of us fishing in and around the ice shacks they already had set up there, <laughs> a few hundred yards from the highway across the ice and not far from shore. Fishing was slow, but I decided to take a little tour of the area on my three-wheeler. Ooh, three-wheelers. Those were adventure. <laughs> uh, yeah. Off in the distance was a little narrow, in, uh, narrow little inlet that went far inland from the lake, about 150 yards, and was about 25 yards across. 
with forest on either side. So I pulled up to the entrance of it and turned off my machine and started off on foot towards the end of this little inlet or channel. Often these little shallow inlets that provide amazing ice fishing for huge northern pike. So I thought we may have to move a little later here a little later if things didn't improve where we were. I, uh, I slowly made my way up to the inlet uh, when the silence and tranquility of my location was shattered. To me on the left side of this inlet, back towards the lake and in the forest, suddenly uh, it suddenly sounded like large trees, and I mean thick trees, were being snapped and broken, mm-hmm. like popsicle sticks. It says popsicle sticks, but I know what they mean. It was a ways in from me, but it was so loud it sounded like I was 10 feet away. This went on for about 10 seconds. Something was thrashing around, seemingly wanting to be heard. I stopped instantly and just listened and looked. A few seconds later, I heard knocking on my right, which was the mainland forest side on the other side of, of me in this inlet. Very loud knocks. Then the same tree snapping and thrashing that had just come from the other side of me. To this day, I remember the next part like it was yesterday because to this day I still cannot explain why I felt and acted this way. As soon as all this tree breaking started going on, I had a powerful feeling of foreboding wash over me right to my gut. And to this day, also to this day, I haven't felt it twice. But for some reason, which I'm not even sure was a conscious one, um, my curiosity drove me to keep walking inland up the inlet. The tree smashing started again on my left towards the lake, but this time it was further down the inlet in the forests. I had a zillion things crossing my mind, but I could not reconcile what these animals could be. Moose had stopped rutting a a couple months before, and no animals could have snapped so many large trees with such ease. And frankly, I'm not sure even a moose could have accomplished what I heard that day. And the snow would have had to have been 25 to three feet deep back there. As I continued on listening to this, I started up again on my right towards the forest. I wasn't thinking Bigfoot back then, so I I didn't think to look for slumped over or crouched down dark masses against a tree, etc. When you're in these forested areas in winter, the brown and black colors of the background seem to blend together with shadows and etc. against a white contrast of snow. So. I could have been looking at them and not even known it because I could, I could see large trees coming down back there on my right side, but just could not see an animal. Whatever was breaking these trees and knocking back and forth on both sides would have to be massive. This was the strangest part for me, really. As all of this was going on, I'm listening and looking on both sides. The next thing I knew, I was almost at the end of this 150-yard inlet and almost at the forest. I clearly remember just standing there, not moving and collecting my thoughts for who knows how long. And this is where the foreboding feeling became even more intense. I honestly felt like I was being surrounded. Mm. These animals are still breaking down and smashing trees on both sides of me, but now we're at the end of this inlet and my machine is 150 yards away through snow and ice. But that's not even the most gut-wrenching part for me. As I'm standing there thinking what a fool I was, for going all the way there, where this stuff was going on, about halfway back to my machine, trees started breaking again. And that's when it hit me. Holy mackerel, these things were luring me deep inside of this inlet, now cut off from the main part of the lake, where I couldn't be seen and are about to cut cut off my exit. Being in my early 20s at the time and virtual gym rat, I was actually in excellent shape. I covered that distance in no time, flat out, purely out of fear. Me too, yeah. Yeah. Jumped on my machine and pinned it. I don't even think I even looked back. What's bothered me all these years is that I know roughly what size and how much power it would take to do what these animals did that day. So unless moose can knock on trees and make sounds like a basketball bat hammering a tree and two bulls together run out of the rut for some reason... Then they weren't moose. What the hell is a basketball bat? 
Or baseball bat? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> what is this basketball bat? Basketball? They're big. It's bigger than baseball bats. <laughs> okay, gotcha. <laughs> Just like those those old fat Albert ones. Those huge. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they certainly were not any other known animal that I've heard of. So there it is. That is my story from Manitoba, and I've carried this bag with me all these years. Wow. It's time to put the bag down, so to speak, and share this. I kept it to myself, not wanting people to think I'm nuts or some kind of coward for running away that day. Being a modder builder and a nightclub bouncer in those days, this kind of story could have hurt my tough guy reputation. But I've been in my fair share of hair-raising hunting adventures, especially with black bear, involved many times, and I never took a step back. On this day, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. All right. We're going to go to the last uh, hour break, and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Yeah. <laughs> 
are usually associated with an individual. Hauntings seem to be connected with an area. A house, usually. The guy's disturbance is of fairly short duration, perhaps a couple of months. Hauntings can go on for years. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is hour number two. We have landed in the second hour of the Paranormal Portal. So, you got that going for you. And uh, we're thrilled that you're here and more people have come in. It's great to see you all. Thank you. Yeah. And speaking of that, speaking we should see of. We should see who's here. Like like a shout out? Well, just like that. Like, like if you're not typing, you're not going to get one. Yeah, that's right. Only chatters. Well, oh, shout out. TFR, we got BAM420 and great guest. How you guys doing? Good to see you guys. And then let's see what's going on on YouTube. The YouTubes. The YouTubes are on, Don. And we've got, well, just a handful in here that are talking currently. Android Purity. Miss D Ocean's here. GG's here. Ghost <laughs> Magnet. Justin Good Earth. Good to see you, Justin. Yep. Great to see you. Oh, somebody else. People are piling in now. Android. Good to see you. Ghost Magnet. Digger Dog popped in. Good to see you. Uh, Ruger Ridge is here. Ruthie is here. Sugar Bridges. Somebody else. Karen Elberding just popped up. Hi, Karen. <laughs> um, Ruger Ridge. Ruthie. Sugar Bridges. The Hybrid is here. The high Tide. The High. What? High Tide. Oh, High Tide. <laughs> oh, gosh. We've done that before. <laughs> All right. Well, at least I'm consistent. At least I'm consistent. Uh, then we've got Tina Satomi here. Uh, and Tracy Bowers is here, and Energetic Team is here, mm -hmm. E.T. E.T. All right, well, welcome, you guys. Thank you for being here and being a part of the journey, as always. And for those of you that are not chatting, but just kicking back, relaxing, God bless you. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there was a couple. Did you say Ruger Ridge? Ruger's here. I s thought I did, oh, but okay. Ruger, good to see you. Uh, Sano Senio, don't know that name. What? Uh, s s s yes, yes. We'll just leave it at that. It's not popped up on my screen. Oh, that's okay. Well, no, it's back a ways. And there was, yeah, there was a quote. Co import, oh, import Dan one was a name I saw earlier. Vincent nice. Richardson, yeah. So those are new names too. So there you go. Wonderful. Um, well, it's great to see you guys. A few new peepers. A few new people. It's always fun to see new people here as well as our our family that always shows up we love having you guys here but you mean this the spice must flow the <laughs> spice must oh flow. have you seen the new no Dune yet i have not i've seen clips of it i've been Just, told it was a letdown i don't know it I've looked like it was decent it. i thought the first movie was oh. a letdown but i've never read the book either. there's a there's a netflix has the legend of the rings the oh yeah rings. yeah I've heard some yeah. people are not not hyped about that either. Oh, I'm hyped about it. I sure you are. Yeah. But I've heard. I just have heard. I don't know how anybody would know whether it was good or not. It's like not released yet. But anyway. Well, you know, there's there's test markets and stuff. Sure. You know. Well, I hear you. Yeah. All right. Well, let's get back to the show. Um, we have one more Sasquatch Chronicles article to get through. Sweet. And then we have some trucker stories that are going to be very interesting they will be interesting you hear me <laughs> or else or else um but next one is up is from sasquatch chronicles again and this is from february 2nd an encounter in iowa 
Uh, so listener writes, up to last August 2021, I was living in the Ozarks, Marble Hill, Missouri, working as a criminal investigator for the Health and Senior Services for the Missouri government. Yes, we observed some weird things while living there. That doesn't surprise me. The Ozarks are plenty busy mm -hmm. yeah. for weirdness. Uh, in August, we moved to Truro, Iowa, uh, where I came originally from. My wife, oh, look at that big paragraph. Oof. <laughs> My wife goes out of the garage to smoke, out to the garage to smoke. In November and December of 2021, there were several times when she ran inside to tell me she heard heavy footsteps and some strange heavy breathing. As in, <laughs> I was nowhere to be near. <laughs> and it wasn't you, Don, nope, right? Okay. Nope. As in something very large out in the dark. I went out several times with my sidearm thinking, or, or rather, I don't know what I was thinking because this is Iowa, not, not grizzly country, not even a substantial black bear population. This occurred on several occasions, and one night she ran in and said she had been standing and looking at the lights in town. We live out in an open plain about a half mile away from Truro, a tiny little town, when something dark passed between her and the town lights. We determined that it had to have been very tall, like shack or taller, in order for those lights to have been blocked out from her angle. More recently, I believe about three weeks ago, I was sitting in our room and heard right next to me a very low growl. Now, I'm used to large animals. I grew up working with livestock and horses. I know what big animals sound like. This thing sounded huge, mm. bigger than any dog, and I guess... I could have been a huge bear, but we just don't have those here. Needless to say, I was creeped out because the realization of just how thin the wall of a house can be became really obvious. Yeah, no doubt. My wife runs in about a minute later looking wild-eyed and told me she had been in the garage and had heard to her left, our room is to the left, around the house, this low growl that could have been from something huge, not a dog, not even the biggest dog in existence would have that kind of low resonance. And honestly, we just don't have anything else here that could have done it. I think the wife needs to just give up smoking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know it. It's just time to quit smoking, I'm thinking. A couple nights later, I was sitting in the same spot, and a large bang happened against the house. It was as if a large stick had been struck against the house at just below roof level. And I've not been able to come up with why or how it happened and by what. We live in an open area. Yeah, there are woods that are approximately two miles away, and this is mostly corn and bean fields with a spattering of houses and the trees that accompany them. Although not thickly populated, the homes in this area, all of southern Iowa, are spaced out. There is no place where a huge animal, or probably not a person, unless being very stealthy, could be just hanging out in the woods long term without detection. Mm. Or could there? I'm just saying... These, uh, if it is a Bigfoot, they're pretty... Uh... Well, but it's only two miles away. I mean, a Bigfoot probably walks... I, you know what? A person walks anywhere between like three and six miles an hour, okay? Mm -hmm. So it would take a person less than an hour to walk two miles to the woods. Sure. So a Sasquatch has a larger gait. Mm -hmm. So how long do you think it takes them to walk two miles? Sure. And plus, they walk everywhere. And yeah, and much faster than we do. Yeah. So it'll probably so take them like 10 minutes. It, it, two miles is nothing. They're probably just out <clears throat> foraging for that. Yeah. You know, did yep. you, did your cat come up missing? Might be the problem. <laughs> well here, you know, and, and being as it's, as it's agricultural. So there's probably, right. there's probably livestock growers and yeah. stuff and, and, or hog farms or something like that. Or, so. or even, or even leftover, uh, 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 uh fields that haven't been, you know, Cleaned potatoes. Yeah. yeah. You know, the gleaners haven't got in there and got the potatoes and the, and the, and the corn and the, this, that, and the other in Iowa, you know? Sure. So, you know, I mean, yeah. but, but you know, when you're on livestock places, they have casualties yeah. just from the oh, yeah. operation. So yeah. I'm sure they just pitch them into a dumpster. Well, if you're a big animal that's uh, subsisting on, you know, not natural foraging, it's probably a buffet, really. I feel you know, just a, living around bar farms. I feel a Monty Python reference coming on. Oh. And our ghost makes is asking, a shrubbery? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, could be. I wasn't familiar with that reference, but that's funny. <laughs> the, King, the Knights of Knee. Oh. We okay. want a shrubbery. <laughs> Okay, King now it's funny. Bring it to us with this red herring. <laughs> <laughs> All 
Well, that could be it. There could be some squatch living out there just fine. Yeah, I think so. I mean, they may just night. They just may, you know, subsist at night in the forest and then come out and just hit the farms. They probably yeah. got a circuit. You know, yeah, probably. I don't know. It's the low hanging fruit. I don't think. I don't think people understand how un, unobservant most people are. You know, like. Right. We, we get tunnel vision in our lives. It's like, you you know, those of us with phones are like looking right. instead of looking. And how many people are just like thinking about what they got to do and they're just going to the truck right. and then they get in and drive wherever they're going. And if you're, if it's something intelligent, it's not hard to stay hidden. Right. Well, I mean, even, even if you're in the <clears> woods, you know, you're only looking left, right, and, you know, forward and backwards. A lot of people, not mo I'm just, a, a lot of people don't bother to look up and down. Sure. You know, yep. so, you know, you don't yeah. know what's above you. <laughs> yep. You have no idea what could be sitting in the branches right above you. Yep, exactly. So I, I don't think it's it's hard to believe that even in Iowa, they probably have a, a population that does just fine. Yep. It might not be a, a real robust and thick population, but, you know, I'm sure they do just fine. I think they, they, they live closer to us than we think. Yeah. And, and I think that they forage within, you know, within city limits a lot of times, right. like, that's not at all a stretch of the imagination because, uh, you know, our, our garbage is probably like, uh, uh, you know, an amazing feast, <laughs> right? Yes. Yeah. Gigi, so. Gigi says she'd be terrible at hiding. She remembers playing hide and seek. And as soon as I started hiding, I'd have to go pee. <laughs> <clears throat> Hers is called hide and weep. <laughs> hide, hide and we have to be. <laughs> <laughs> all right well there you go it could happen oh, poor gg poor gg but asked for it. there it is now we're gonna dive into trucker stories the trucker stories that's right exactly right don this is a story that i found on a on a site called roughmaps.com so it's bet. it's not one that i i don't think they they specialize in paranormal but but they have an article here about paranormal uh, occurrences that people in the in the trucks have experienced. I think it's I think it's another Reddit aggregate, to be honest with you. But but we'll go through this, and this again is from roughmaps.com, <clears throat> and yeah, it looks like destinations, travel, culture, lifestyle. It's just maybe a, a travel kind of site for all we know. Yeah. But it says endless night truckers reveal their creepiest stories on the road, uh -huh. and I don't see an author. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. How are you doing? <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at what these the truckers are talking oh, about. And hi to Jess as well. <clears throat> and hi, Jess. Absolutely. Seven Pearls. She wasn't here for the shout-out, was she? Uh, she was. I don't think she was talking at the time. Okay, but. well, she's here. Seven Pearls was here, too. All right, good to see you guys. Thanks for coming in. Um, here's the first story, and this is called The Disappearing Woman. Mm. My uncle said one night he was sleeping above in his trailer bed, when suddenly in the distance, he could see a small light approaching. As it got closer, he had a chilling realization. He described seeing a really old, wrinkly woman who held a candle draped in dark, dark, dark gowns. He said her nails were so long they curled. Mm. Ooh, that's creepy. Yep. <clears throat> she walked into a cave opening and then disappeared. My uncle said he noped out of there real fast. Okay. <laughs> What would you do? I mean, that's like the literal hag, right? You're seeing the hag. Right. Now, a lot of people say, oh, my God, it's a witch. Well, it's not. I mean, a witch is just somebody that practices the, the very earth religion, you know, of, of witchcraft. Right. It's not It's not a paranormal thing in and of itself. There are hags and crones that are supposedly uh, f very real or spiritual, at least, creatures that that prey on people and prey on, you know, children and, you know, and, and, and that, but they're not the same thing. Right. So I, you know, I think that those are, you know, the, the quote unquote crone, um, is what, what he saw, but that's pretty creepy. I wonder where that was, <clears throat> but that was by skater or phi four, four, four skate or phi four, four, four. Okay. I think, I think <clears throat> it's the corruption of skate or die. Probably. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. Let's go to the next one. Gone girl. My cousin works at a truck stop in Kansas. Mm. And she told me about some guy who parked his truck and got out. And then a woman got out of the passenger seat, but it was kind of cold. So the trucker was wearing a coat and a hat, but the woman was wearing summer clothes. My cousin thought nothing of it and did her whole, hi, welcome in. The trucker bought coffee, but the woman just stood there in the doorway. 
Now, my cousin was freaked out. She didn't want to be rude, but she was a teenage girl alone in the gas station in the middle of nowhere. Excuse me, miss, do you need anything? She, she asked. Who are you talking to? The truck driver asked when he got to the checkout. The woman who got out of your truck. My cousin pointed, but the woman had disappeared. She told me she had never seen a look of such pure terror mm. on a man's face before. He just whispered a quiet, oh no, got his coffee and left. Oh boy. The woman did not get back into his truck and my cousin couldn't find her in the store afterward. Uh -oh. She says it was one of the most terrifying experiences she had ever had while on the job. Yeah, that sounds absolutely creepy. So, so yeah, you get out of your <clears> truck <throat> and so does the ghost of the last woman. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oof. That is creepy, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, think about that one for a second. <laughs> Oof, yeah. <laughs> Spirit of the Dusk was the one who submitted that story, apparently. Number three, a voice from beyond. Driving through an abandoned section of Baltimore at 3 o'clock in the morning, my CB radio turned itself on and crackled for a bit. Out of nowhere... That's better than cackling. For <laughs> out of nowhere, some voice over the radio said in a deep southern drawl, I ain't got no panties on. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what they meant by deep southern. <laughs> well, that was good. Ah, uh, well, it's just deep, <laughs> and I don't either. So, you know, just for the record, <laughs> I could see up and down the interstate for miles and saw not one set of headlights around me for hours. <laughs> Those would be covered by bras, not panties. <laughs> Oh, well, you never know. <laughs> a little perky. Oh, anyway, um, yeah, apparently uh, you don't want to hear a deep southern drawl. So. <laughs> I ain't got no panties. <laughs> it's like Sam Elliott. <laughs> Clip it. That's one for the records right there. It was a boat accident. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that better? <laughs> I'm just working through the through my repertoire here. <laughs> yes, Perky, Gigi. I'm Perky. <laughs> I'm firm and Perky. Okay. From the Southern Beach. <laughs> I don't know. I'm all out of Southern uh, oh, draws. That's goodness, it. I certainly hope <clears throat> so. All right. <laughs> Let's, that was by oh. three koalas. Wrote that oh. one. So. I don't know. Would that would that freak you out, or would it just be like, what the hell? <laughs> One of those things. If you heard, I ain't got no panties on. <laughs> so, I'd be like, I'm sorry, I don't remember your name. <laughs> weird. That's a weird one. Number four, In Search of Lost Time. Hi, Cindy. Hi, Cindy. <laughs> um, In Search of Lost Time. It was summer, my dad's birthday, so we drove to a casino two hours away to watch a boxing match with my uncle. It, it finishes, and we drive back the same night. We're nearing a canyon with no phone reception, so we call my mom and tell her, we'll be home soon. The canyon usually takes about 30 minutes with no traffic, and it's around midnight. So we enter the canyon. We're all pretty tired to keep us talking. We started telling stories, and most of them are creepy stories. And this goes on for a while, and it feels like time is passing in a haze. Mm. We pass this part of the canyon and suddenly I get deja vu. I'm convinced we already passed that before. All of us have driven this canyon a hundred times and know the layout. We keep talking and then we pass the same part again. This time I pointed out my dad and uncle noticed the time. It's 1 a.m. and we're still not home. We all start to freak out. We stop talking and just watch the road slowly pass by. Now that we're paying attention though, time seems to catch up. We exit the canyon at around 1.15 a.m., call my mom, who was freaked out. She hadn't heard from us. We still, to this day, have no idea where that extra 45 minutes went. <laughs> that was by 2 Rio 2. It's probably in the same place as the panties. Ah, <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> uh, could be. There might be a whole dimension of lost things. <laughs> and a bunch of socks from the dryer somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> So many things. So many things. Shut up, Don. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Number five, over, over the airwaves. I had a friend tell a story that he swears on to this day. He and his girlfriend were making the drive to Naples, Florida. With dope panties. 
Well, I don't know. They might have had some. I don't know. <laughs> Late night on a two-lane road through the Everglades and, and had been in a line of cars behind an 18-wheeler for multiple miles. Well, she fell asleep, and he was suffering from suff- surfing for something to listen to on the radio. Only one station came in clearly enough to be tolerable, so he gave it a listen. The DJ came on and said something along the lines of, the stars are extra bright in the Everglades tonight. If you're driving through there, pull off and take a look, he said. He normally wouldn't even think about it, for, but for some reason, he felt compelled to that night. He woke up his girlfriend. She was annoyed and didn't want to, but he convinced her it would be worth it. They stopped and just took, took in the stars for five to ten minutes, and he said it was the most amazing sky he's ever seen. They get back to the road and drive another few minutes. Then they witness a horrific sight. They come across a massive accident. Mm. The truck they were following had jackknifed and took out a handful of vehicles that were following it. He said there, there were multiple fatalities. They most likely would have been involved in the crash, if not for that random DJ on the only radio station to come in that night. Mm, the doubt. Wow. Codeman 12345 wrote that. That's uh that's serendipity right there. I need to drink, getting dry, getting dry. The uh th- the throat ain't all back together. <laughs> Maybe if I had my panties, it'd be better. <laughs> Maybe, I'm just saying. Uh, <clears throat> check your time. Oh, under under it was 4 minutes. 4 minutes. <laughs> Don sounds like, please let there be a break. <laughs> all right, we got time for number 6, I think. 4 minutes. This is an autopilot. I drive five hours one way to work. Jeez. My shift gets out at 11.30 p.m., so I've got, if I've got a second wind, I can usually make it the whole way home. Sometimes, though, I have to stop to nap. Wow. So I recall getting tired shortly before Birmingham, Binghamton, which from work to Binghamton is proper, proper is about one and a half hours. This exit with a gas station that I stop at frequently is about 15 minutes before this. Anyway, I stop and gas up, buy my snacks, put up a sign in my window saying, I'm okay, I just have four more hours of driving to do, please don't knock. I push the seat back and nap and have an alarm set for 20 minutes. This is now about 1 a.m. Next thing I know, it's 6.30 a.m. and I'm on some back road with houses, with houses but also fields, and I'm driving super slowly. Huh. Ooh, he's actually driving. driving yeah. I have no idea where I am and how I came to be here. I don't have a lot of service bars, but I plug in my mom's address and home, hope directions pop up. It does. It takes me to a highway entrance in Harpersville, New York. Okay, in about 20 minutes, I'm back on track. Assuming I woke up to my alarm, it would have been like 1.30 a.m. And I came, I came to about 6.30 a.m. What the heck was I doing for five hours? How did I not hit anything? Checked out the car. It was fine. How was I driving the speed limit? Just how? Or was I asleep the whole time? The terror allowed me to complete the drive. Yeah. Yeah. That. yeah. Why? <clears throat> no doubt. I mean, that's the kind of thing you come up. Have you ever nodded off while you're driving? Oh, yeah. yeah. Is not is that not the most heart-stopping thing ever, though? Uh, I don't know. Because when I was working at the prison in, in Spokane... <clears throat> <laughs> I used to he used to get off of double shifts, right? Yeah. And I used to it, the roads were so bad I could literally put the wheels of my Jeep in the ruts <laughs> and literally just let go of the steering wheel and it would drive me ten miles one direction. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, you know. Well, in that case it's almost like a it's almost like those cars at the fair at the like the fairs. Yeah, just yeah, they're on a rails, rail and yeah. you just gotta let them go. No. <laughs> no, I just I've I know I've I've actually woke up like, I know I was only, like, out for just a fraction of a second. Right. But it was when my head was flipping back, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm doing 70 miles an hour. And my head is, like, dipping right. over. It's like, oh, my God. I And then I was just so hyper awake after that. It was like, oh. But there was a period of time where I never was able to sleep, and I went through this, this whole period of, like, narcolepsy where I would just literally fall asleep at a, a drop of a hat. But, yeah, that's a terrifying feeling. Oof. Uh, yeah, actually it is. Yeah, you know, when I was in North Dakota, actually, I would drive like a rail crew for like 15 hours, right? Straight. Oh, geez. Uh, or we'd stop and I'd sit on the side of the road waiting for him for eight hours, you know, with nothing to do, mm-hmm. literally in nowhere North Dakota. And so, you know, you get really tired, you know, and then you got to drive, you know, 300 miles back, <laughs> Yeah. you know, and it's like, I'd do this all in 15 hours and I'd be erect. 
you know, yeah. I get, getting into, you know, the last five miles into Harvey, North Dakota, <laughs> if you know where that is. Nope. I mean, just drive, <laughs> stop for coffee. You get up, you get in the coffee, you get in the the gas station, you get your coffee, you're drinking your coffee. Next thing you know, you're waking up because you spilled your coffee in your lap. <laughs> <'Cause it's, laughs> ooh, 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 hot, hot potato, hot potato. <laughs> That's, no, those are potatoes. Hot potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> That's absolutely terrifying. Too. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole different kind of terrifying, though. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to go to our last break here in just a few seconds. Wow. So hopefully you stick around and ride it out with us when we come back. We'll finish this story about the truckers and then we'll get on to maybe one more story if we get a chance. I'm not sure how it'll work out for time, but Gigi, you're twisted. Yeah. Guys and jeggings. No, that is not hot. Jeggings? I don't jeggings. even know what jeggings are. Je- legging, jean leggings. Oh, wow. Jeggings. It's one of those Ooh. mashup yeah. ones. Yeah. Well, that's enough to keep you awake. All right. Oh. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go Run. away. Keep you running. <laughs>
hi <laughs> welcome back yep we're still here you didn't get rid of us yet we're not done we got a full 25 minutes more of show to give you and by god we're gonna give you every bit of it right don every stinking minute every minute you've every got it coming shit. you've been waiting you've got it coming all three inches <sighs> Um, so Stacy says, I never, I never thought in my life of paranormal, there would be a spot about panties mentioned <laughs> best time ever. That's why you've hung around for so stupid long, Stacy. We love you. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yep. Jeez. Yeah. I didn't, uh, I didn't know. I ain't got no panties on would be paranormal I either. I ain't got no panties. Where's Minola? That's not what I heard. Mini, <laughs> Mini Nola, Texas. I don't know. No idea. But we are part of the way through an article about some weird experiences that have been had by truckers, uh, over-the-road truckers, and over-the-road drivers. They haven't all been truckers exclusively. But let's continue on this journey, and this is coming from roadroughmaps.com. the journey with the truckers, get it? Uh, yeah, continue our journey. Yeah. That's right, and totally unintentional. You'd think that was planned? Nope. Just came out that way. All right, we're on number seven right now of our list, <laughs> Last Chance. I was driving through the Canadian Rockies late at night, and I had just passed through a small town. So I'm driving through the pitch black, and I need to stop and go to the bathroom. But because it's so dark, I missed the last rest stop for the next while, so no problem. The highway is completely deserted, so I pull to the side of the road, and I do my business while staring out into the dark and then stand by my car for a bit. And as I'm standing there, I see the figure of a man just walking out of the tree line. I'm miles from civilization, patchy cell service, and there isn't a soul on the road. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, and maybe it was a deer, but nope, this was a man. So I calmly walk back into the driver's door and get in and lock in the doors behind me. I'm keeping my eye on this guy as I nervously put my car in drive, ready to peel out, but for some reason... I just stayed put. Guy walks right up to my passenger door, knocks on the window. I crack the window and ask, what's up? He replied to me in a very, very serious tone, I need you to call the 911. Well, I cautiously ask why, and he tells me his heartbreaking story. He'd gone out into the woods to kill himself, but he couldn't go through with it because he had, just, he had thought of his daughters right before he was about to do it, so... I call the authorities while this guy quietly cries outside. He had a kitchen knife and was going to use it on himself, so I stayed in the car and advised him maybe to leave the knife in the ground before the officers arrived. They came and got him, but before they left with him, I gave him a solid heart-to-heart -heart and wished him well. I still think about him, and I hope he was able to turn things around. Mm -hmm. Wow, what are the odds, right? No. <clears throat> he was just out there alone. How did he get there? That's just really weird. Well, that was by Juicy Thought-Tato. <laughs> Thought-Tato, that's funny. Uh, anyway. All right, number eight. <clears throat> what? I was thinking about what Thought-Tato might mean. Well, thought, thought is an internet term to... to it's kind of a derogatory term towards some, some yeah, it's that, ladies. You know, like they're just that ditzy. Yeah. Not not ditzy. Well, <laughs> that that are very promiscuous with themselves. <laughs> ah, there you How's go. that? <laughs> um, number eight on the wrong track. I work for a railroad, and sometimes it's just a conduct, uh, just a conductor, an engineer cruising along on a very isolated, fairly wooded track. I've heard a few other guys mention something about a family or a man with a suitcase walking down the track with no concerns, constantly constant blowing of the horn flashing the lights, etc., and they just kept walking down the track and then disappearing. Ah. Oof. That was by Ty Lurk, 135. Um, <clears throat> kind of like the Stand By Me kind of stuff, huh? Right, yeah. Get off the track. <laughs> There's a train coming. I almost got hit by a train when I was a kid, too. I don't know how you can almost get hit by a train. I was on a bridge with, oh, with well, some see, friends. Oh, that's different, yeah. If you're messing around on a truck. Yeah, you know. and it was there was this bend in the track, and right. we couldn't see it coming, and all of a sudden... There it was bearing down on us 60 miles an hour. And we're just, and we literally jumped at the last minute possible to make it to the bank and made it. We all made it, but God, it was so close. Mm. It's absolutely frightening. Mm. 
So this one's Don't Look Now. I'm sorry my voice is getting real hamburger, but I'm doing the best I can. Doing pretty good, I think. Um, Don't Look Now. I used to work as a field technician in the oil industry, so I spent a lot of time driving through remote areas of Canada at odd hours. One very strange and eerie experience sticks with me. I was driving late at night when I noticed a very large black shape on the road in front of me. Thinking it was a moose, I stepped on the brakes, coming to a stop only a few feet from it. Despite being so close and having my headlights shining directly on it, I still couldn't tell exactly what I was looking at. It was vaguely the shape of a four-legged animal, but very big, probably about six feet tall. Aside from that, it was completely featureless. I couldn't make out any details whatsoever. No shine from the eyes, nothing. But then I noticed something even more terrifying. There were more of them in the ditch on both sides of the road. Oh, wow. Five or six, and maybe more. All the same as the black shape on the road in front of me. None of them were moving. They didn't look like physical objects or living things. More like large path patches of absolute darkness. After I got over my shock and dread started to set in, I drove around the thing on the road and sped off. Wow. Jeez. Wonder wonder what that could have been. That's strange. <clears throat> that was by Vextrude. Whoever Vextrude is. Hmm. Number 10, the Cheshire Grin. I spent the past four years driving every night from work. I was in a fairly rural, fairly rural part of Mississippi, somewhere between Clarksdale and Greenwood. Is it the last train to Clarksdale? Oh, Clarksville. Okay, I got that monkey song, and I was like, wait a minute, what? <clears throat> it's Clarksdale and Greenwood, where it's all two-lane highways, the 250-mile drive home. The weather had turned pretty sour as I was leaving Clarksdale. I called my wife and told her there were high wind advisories and very possible tornado threats. And I'd call her as soon as I made it safe uh, to a safe area again. I had already been working for 14 hours when I got in the truck, so I ate dinner and grabbed some coffee to stay awake and alert. Mm -hmm. Now, if you've never driven through flat farmland at night for 100 <laughs> miles, it's very fatiguing and spooky, yep. even without bad weather. Yep. I'd driven maybe 30 miles out into the farmland when hail started bouncing off my truck. Oh, In July, hail means tornado, and I knew it. I pull off to the side with no one around me and start looking for the storm or tornado I believe is approaching. I rolled the passenger window down and shone a bright flashlight off into the night. Nothing. There. I turn to the driver's side and this guy has his face pushed against my glass, grinning from ear to ear. Ooh, that's creepy. It was a tall male, very, very pale white eyes were sunk back in quite a bit, but that grin is what truly got me. It was corner to corner with crooked teeth like the Cheshire Cat. Wow. Then I screamed and he was gone. I slammed the truck and drive and took off at the highest speed I could. Now my company has a camera installed in my truck. So even though I called my wife and didn't tell her about the guy or the hail, I made darn sure I checked in my SD card the moment after I hung up. I promise you this guy never popped up on my front or rear cameras. Wow. <clears throat> I've always played it off as my imagination, but I will say I don't drive through the Delta in the dark anymore if I absolutely don't have to. Can't say I blame you. No, no doubt. Wow. <clears throat> Hold on. <clears throat> I'm just getting really ratty all of a sudden there. So that was by Ruby Red 13 GT. Hmm. Number 11, The Dark Beast. Don't you like those dark beasts, Don? Well, you know. They're good on a grill, right? <laughs> <laughs> you need lots of butter. <laughs> lots of butter and a good dry rub. Mm. <laughs> Just like mom used to make. All right, the dark beast. I was working overnight shift from Friday night into Saturday morning at a gas station. At about 6 a.m., a semi pulls into the fuel aisle. The driver gets out and almost runs into the store, clearly shaken. His face is completely white, and he's obviously upset. My first thought is this poor man had hit someone on the road, since we get a lot of people walking across the four-lane highway in front of the store. So I ask what's wrong. He looks at me for a second and is like, I'm not crazy. And I'm thinking, oh, great. 
I'm here all alone with this guy, and is he's losing it. I say, of course not. I just saw something huge on the side of the road, like a deer or a bear. We had a bear get in the dumpster last week. No, bigger than a bear, on its back legs. Maybe a big person? I picked up a dead buck on the side of the road and carried it over, over its... Sh- oh, oh, maybe a big person? No, it picked up a dead buck on the side of the road and carried it over its shoulder into the woods. I can only stare at him. My brain cannot deal with this information this late in a shift. A local comes up to the counter get as usual, and the guy tells him the story too. And the local says, Oh, that's Bigfoot that lives near the county line. The truck driver and I are both looking at this guy like he has two heads. He has to be joking. This trucker pays for his fuel at record speed and leaves, (laughs) never to be seen again. The local still insists it's Bigfoot. I just don't go into the woods now because I don't know. That was by the turtle moves. <clears throat> Man. Ruthie says Ruthie says you need some hot brew with honey. Mm. I do. Yeah. I do need hot brew with honey. Probably brandy too. You know, you know, just well a good mead would cover that. Yeah. yeah. That'd be good. There's no such thing as good mead, by the way. Oh, you don't like mead? I hate it. I like mead. You know, Paisley makes it and it's like eh. Eh. <laughs> Number 12, near miss. My great uncle drove big trucks through the middle of nowhere, living in the middle of nowhere. Sometimes people would leave trash on the road. And mm-hmm. since he had a big truck, he'd just smash into said boxes or paper and continue on. Yeah. Well, one day he was coming on a cardboard box and just had the urge to swerve and miss this one for some reason. He misses it and passes by with no incident. Then he looks in his rear view and out of the box pops a kindergarten age little kid. Mm. Wow, I think we've covered that one before. Yeah, no doubt. Hey, um, Maggie needs a Maggie needs the clap. Oh, what happened? She 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 did a super chat. Oh, uh, thank you, Maggie. That's so sweet. Maggie, you are you are a wonderful. Thank you so much. She's just always giving so yeah, much. That's does. amazing. Uh, thank you. Tina Sintomi says uh, you need fireball and honey. There you go. That's yeah. a, that's my recipe can, can right there. Just, can we just skip the honey and go with the fireball? <laughs> I'm okay with that. I do have some brandy out there. I just, you know, I, I don't know. My, my voice has done really good, but it's, it's just the tail end of being sick. It's just, you know, I'm not 100%. True, so yeah. I did it for pretty good for a long time. Um, Let's go to number 13 here. A rude awakening. I think the worst creepy thing that has happened to me, this was when I was heading from Arizona to Utah. This was uh, a few years ago, and the main highway had been taken out in a flash flood. It was under construction, so I had to take a weird detour through the mountains in lower Utah. It was getting late, and getting I was getting tired, so I pulled off onto the shoulder, excuse me again, and went to sleep in my bunk. Now, this is in the middle of nowhere. The closest town is like 40 miles away, so it's completely pitch black outside once I turn off the lights. Around 4 a.m., I wake up because I'm hearing something messing with my truck, like playing with the air and power cables between my cab and the trailer, which is literally six inches from where my head is at (laughs) on the outside of the cab. Then I feel something climb onto the landing that's on the back of my truck. It shakes my whole truck, so I'm guessing... Something around 200 pounds was climbing around back there. I'm thinking like a mountain lion or a bear at this point. I'm wide awake, and I want to get this thing away from me. So I slam my hand into my cab wall, trying to scare whatever it is out there. The response made me jump out of my skin. I heard someone, a male, scream. I hear them fall off my back of my truck. And then I hear about 15 other people around my truck yelling. I climb up front, turn on my lights, and illuminate a squad of army reserves <laughs> doing their midnight march and capture drills. Turns out these guys were supposed to find an abandoned truck and secure it for their midnight drills. That truck was three miles back down the road, and they were not expecting me to be sleeping there, and I thought they, was, they thought I was part of the drill. I'm ex-military, so after explaining, I was not the part of their test, and there was just an out-of-coincidence. We laughed it off. 
They had to radio their community commanding officer and tell him not to have the other squads bother me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think you read that one not too long ago, but that was actually, uh, that was a good one. Yeah, That was by DWL52. And thank you, Android. <clears throat> <clears throat> you know... For hot green tea with honey. There you go. Yeah, well, there you go. I tell you what, it's just going to take probably a serious cough after I'm off the air, and you know I'll, I'll get this out at. It's not. It's just you know the tail end of this, oh. whatever it is. Tina says I have fireball, lemon juice, and honey. Come on over, make it a party. Ooh, hey, <laughs> I've already left my panties at home. <laughs> <laughs> Don's a cheap date. <laughs> Speaking of thoughts, <laughs> yeah, no doubt. There's a thought for you. There's a thought. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Can we just go with the fireball and the lemon juice and use the honey <clears throat> for other things? <laughs> Ooh, hey, this is a family show, Don. Jeez, <laughs> for like you know something else <laughs> don thought this was this was, was another good. portal that didn't come in <laughs> yeah. mm. let's let that die <clears throat> okay number 14 one big creepy family <laughs> that's us hey <laughs> hey finally a story about us it's us they finally wrote about us one big creepy family i've seen some rather screwed up stuff over the years i was driving across kansas on i-70 headed west there's a pretty long stretch out there that's just a couple of little towns and not much else. As the night wore on, I realized I'd been passed several times by this beat-up old motorhome. In it, several people sat with their noses almost pressed against the window, <laughs> watching me with creepy interest as they passed every time. Mm -hmm. I, <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> also, I, I never noticed where I repassed them at. A couple of times, I swear they passed me twice where there were no rest areas or exits to pull off of at. I would have seen them stop somewhere, but yet here they were passing me again. They all look like some variant of Charles Manson <laughs> <laughs> or some other freaky type. Had me pretty uptight by the time I got to the truck stop and stopped for the night. Almost every driver I know has seen stuff late at night that just can't be explained. Maybe it's fatigue or maybe not. The nose is pressed to the windows. <laughs> <laughs> That was by Mr. Ed 57076. <laughs> you got to wonder, what if those are UFOs just kind of screwing with people? <laughs> yeah, like, hey, put on, the, put on the RV look. Put on the RV skin. Let's, let's moon them. Actually, there's <laughs> pro probably a mobile <clears throat> meth lab, and everybody was sketching it. <laughs> yeah, just, yeah, that <laughs> That's could be. Be on, the, be on the lookout for Breaking Bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heisenberg's in that one. Oof. Number oh. 15. Whoa, what? Oh, no, I was just, it made me think of something. I was, we were driving home one day and we came up past the Burger King. We were heading, we were facing north, like, you know, like we're going out to our place. Uh -huh. And we stopped at the Burger King, the light there on Kootenai Cutoff where the Walmart is. And we look up and there's this, there's this, I swear to God, it was something out of Breaking Bad. This beat up um, RV just coming, right? And you can see lights behind it. Flashing oh, really? lights. I'm like, oh my god! And so, anyhow, they get to the light. They hate this car, and then it crosses over the median where we are, and it comes up over the median, and we back up a little bit, and it passes right in front of us. Ooh. I was like, holy crap! Was it being driven? Yes. And I tell you what, um, we pulled over because we were kind of like we had to change our panties, <laughs> uh, and there were like cops. You know, they're all drawn down on it. Oh like, really? Oh god, they were on it. Like they were on it. Team. Ooh, and they oh, those geez. guys did not want to stop. Huh? Ooh no. Wonder they, what was going on in that uh, car. I don't know. Uh -huh. Oof. That's a Charlie Manson or some freaky family. <laughs> that was crazy. All right, number fifteen. Bright lights, big mystery. I got to test drive some rigs and trucks for my job, and I was driving down south along the Sea of Cortez with a buddy at night. It was this four-hour dirt road to Gonzaga, 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 which is pretty much in the middle of nowhere in the desert, and we see the lights of a car behind us coming down fast and now effectively tailing us. The jerk had a bar mount headlights on top, which are super bright. It's normal for local locals to party in the nearest spring breaker town and then go to this particular road super fast to test their rigs since there are no authorities there oh, hold on there we go 
So I try waving it uh, for him, waving him off to get the guy to keep the lights low since he's blinding us, but he isn't slowing down a bit or turning his roof lights off. Again, this was dangerous, super dark road. Finally, I found a spot to bail off the road without crashing, and we see the lights passing by us super fast, going straight toward a curb, and we were like, that's it, he's going to crash down, the, down into the sea. But that's not what happened at all. Sure enough, the vehicle goes off the road, but the lights didn't fall. They kept going straight into the beach and to the sea and then pitched up abruptly to the night sky and cool. disappeared. Wow. We didn't say a word for a minute or so, and then my buddy goes, did you see it? And I say, you the freaky flying truck? <laughs> we didn't talk about it anymore, as it simply didn't make sense for us to talk about. I still don't understand. That was by Eric. Eritark. Wow. Huh. So it just went up into the sky, Don. Yeah. Um, kind Oops. Of a mix between. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm thinking like Close Encounters of the Third Kind where they're at that <laughs> yeah, yeah. that railroad crossing right. or whatever. Yeah. I, I was thinking of uh, Jeepers Creepers. Oh, I never saw the, that. The truck with the, yeah, the old truck that when they tailed you and ran you off the road and stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of stories like that around like every town, every state. Seems to have that one that one country road with well, the, yeah, the ghost lights. Yeah, that, that one Nunker road, you know. <laughs> I didn't say Nunker. I did not say that. <laughs> I did not. On Nunker Road. <clears throat> Take me home. <laughs> All right, let's continue on. We got four minutes left, so we'll just stick with this. See how far we make it. There's still a lot left. I'll be working through this one t tomorrow night, too. <laughs> Number 16, the Whisper Men. <laughs> which is about what's going to be left in my voice. I'm a FedEx contractor, and I was one of those big box trucks. I finished a long delivery day, and I swear to whatever gods you believe in, what I was hearing and that I was hearing voices in my cab. It wasn't the radio. It wasn't my tinnitus. It wasn't my subconscious. I was hearing whispering voices in my right ear that were coming from the passenger seat. The voices continued even after I'd gotten back to my hub clocked out, and hopped in my own car to go home. They only stopped when I left the parking lot. It only happened that night. I still have no idea what the heck it was because I'd rolled everything else out. Yikes. That was by Sir Judas Iscariot. Oh, God. Well, that'll do well, it. Well, yeah. Yeah, that might do it. <clears throat> 30 pieces of gold or silver. Yeesh. Well, I don't know. Could he have picked up a hitchhiker, you know, a spiritual... Uh, tag along or something, maybe. Right, yeah. That's creepy. Crazy. Crazy stuff. I think we got time for this one. Oh, this one's longer. Holy man. We do not have time for this one. I'll never get that read in three minutes. So, Don. Yes. I think this has been the journey, brother. I think so, too. I think it's uh, it's time to stick a fork in it. <laughs> you did say fork, right? Of course it did. Okay. All right. Oh, goodness. All right. Just making sure, because this is still a family show. But did you have a good time? Yeah. Did you have a good time? Did you? Did he's all talking, of you? He's talking to you in a southern, talking all of you deep southern accent. I still ain't got no panties. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anybody was wondering, <laughs> I do have a wedgie though. Does that count? <laughs> Feeling a wedgie on this gaming chair of mine. It's like <laughs> oh, <laughs> these are these oh. are not long long term oh. chairs. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, I've been sitting on it all day doing projects and stuff. Yeah. And that's, things have, things have worked themselves to oh, a boy. to a point, and uh, that's less than comfortable. So I'll be. Uh, Hi, Gemini. I'll be taking care of that after the show. <laughs> Wonder Woman says, get a thong. Oh, yeah, yeah, might as well, right? Yeah, exactly. All goes there anyway. That's, might as well just yeah. cut out the middleman. Butt floss. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah, that's just a disgusting idea, isn't it? Me and a thong. Could you? I just couldn't even imagine the horror. <laughs> a thong, a thong, a thong. I mean, I, I wouldn't see it, obviously, but <laughs> anybody following me would. Oh, I tell you what. You don't want to see me in a thong. <laughs> Even I, you know, it, I, yeah, jeez. Oh, all right. Well, that's way. <laughs> that's the way to end the show on a spooky note. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, Maggie says thongs are flip flops there. That's right. Oh. Yeah. 
<laughs> that's what we used to call. That's what we used to call flip flop thongs yeah, way back. I remember then. that, and then people because came out with this damn underwear. It goes up their butt, and they called that thong. So it's like, well, what the hell are the things on my feet now? Yeah, exactly. I didn't know what to do. Yeah. I was so confused. On <laughs> you can't call. You can't call. I was, <laughs> <clears throat> it's politically incorrect to call your flip flops thongs anymore. Yeah, but they're thongs, thongs, flip flops, and thick flip flops are thongs. Well, and, that's, and then there's the T bars and T whatever. I wouldn't know anything about those. Isn't that the same thing as like the thong underwear? I don't know. I don't know. I've heard that term too. Well, I don't know. I thought you knew you. Were I talking. don't. I'm not. Up, I'm not up on the female <laughs> dress code here. Obviously, I don't shop there. <laughs> Ruger says you've got a puck wedgie. Oh, puck wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> a puckered wedgie, maybe. Be, <laughs> if I'm not careful, it's going to be a puck fudgy. <laughs> There's the song. <laughs> Love you all. Be good. Be kind. Be nice. Take care of each other. Help each other out. Find the magic in every day. And remember to laugh as much as you can. <laughs> Bye.